Brad Garninghouse has just dropped a bomb and all of you need to pay attention to what he has to say. You are going to be completely blown away by the plan that has been put into action. First things first, let's begin with this video clip. No us Ripple IPO guys, I must ask why. About this, I have a point of view, this is going to be played, and then I will share my thoughts with you. Ripple has made it clear that it will not be conducting initial public offerings in the United States. Once more, why is Ripple involved in the formation of all of their partnerships outside of the United States? I don't see why they are just concerned with other nations. The United States does not appear to be on their radar. I am curious as to why, due to the fact that they are aware that the United States dollar is on the verge of collapsing. It is not my place to explain why the RLUSD is tied to the US dollar. The explanation behind this is as follows. Just put your faith in it. To clarify for those of you who are not familiar with the term, an initial public offering is what it alludes to. Very useful information. For the very first time, wind stocks issued by a private company are made available to the general public. This matter was just brought up by Brad Garninghouse, who clarified the situation. At the Korean Blockchain Week on Wednesday, he said that Ripple Labs will not be pursuing an initial public offering IPO in the United States. The driving force is the ambiguous regulatory environment, which is something that each and every one of us is completely aware of. Gary Gensler serving as the SEC. By all means, they do not wish to engage in any further legal conflict with the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC or with the government. Furthermore, he is urging other cryptocurrency companies that are attempting to penetrate the market in the United States to rethink their strategy because digital rules in this country are still unclear. It was his contention that conducting business in the country was a strategy to rack up more legal expenses. Is he truly trying to discourage investments from the United States? Do you think that would go well with BRICS? My goodness, it most certainly does. This girl is pretty to me. It's fascinating. This girl is pretty to me because I like this chick. You should make it a point to be here with me every single day. Okay, Ripple is not going to go public in our country since the SEC needs to give its approval first. In addition, they are likely to want to launch their initial public offering IPO in a market that is rising given that the stock market has reached all-time new highs. Over the course of maybe two years, it has become absolutely ridiculous. You are aware of the fact that we returned from COVID to the place where we are now. Do you have any idea how terrible things were four years ago? Do you have any idea? Exactly. And the situation that we are in right now is really ridiculous. People are still completely and utterly broke. Excuse my French, but I think you should pay attention. In order to submit an appeal, the SEC has until October 6th to do so. I made a video all about this. I do not believe that the SEC will file an appeal. If they do that, I believe they are going to come out on the losing end. And I don't believe that they intend to make use of the money. However, take a look at this here. This is similar to here 2013 marked the beginning of XRP's existence. Instead of purchasing XRP in 2014, the price of XRP has returned. Oh my God, I really wish I had been aware of it. You could say that I have a billion XRP. Doesn't that mean that it is ISO compliant? This year we'll see the arrival of that. The situation is under control. Is it correct that plant and delivered? When it comes to international money transfers between banks, ISO discusses the possibility of Ripple becoming the norm. As part of the Ripple software, the Interledger protocol goes through the process of becoming a standard protocol for connecting cash ledgers and banks. Okay, that's cool. This is just a quick check to make sure that I did not have my face covered. Please accept my apologies for checking that off. To let you know, Ripple was born at this very location. First, Bitcoin was developed, and then Ripple came into existence. It is expected that blockchain solutions will reach maturity and that all asset exchange networks will become interoperable with Interledger Protocol. Arthur, your consortium was an early adopter of blockchain technology. It's all going to fall apart. Three quarters of the DH fabric are comprised of blockchain solutions, capital markets, and trade finance and finance. ALILP Java becomes the standard for interoperability for projects that are part of the Hyperledger Foundation. Do you agree that it is necessary for all of us to work together? Interoperability is a requirement for everything. As a result, value can move from one network to another network and into Ledger protocol, and it will make all of that possible. Do you agree that the internet of value due to the fact that they want to? They want to create a dent in the cosmos. This is the reason why they want to. They have no intention of wasting time here. Uh, it is not their intention to make a few cash here. Do you agree that they are here to make changes to the entire system? Do you agree to stay on track? This is a letter that was sent out on September 4th, and it basically discusses on behalf of the defendant Ripple Labs to request a stay of the monetary portion of the court's judgment that was entered on August 7th, 2024, and ECF number 924. I the letter also states that the Securities and Exchange Commission of the plaintiff has consented to this request in terms. It might be best to give them a little bit extra time in this place. I am not actually a lawyer. I obtain the opinions of some attorneys if you are interested in going. When it comes to Jeremy Hogan, there is a great deal of truly remarkable content. In addition to that, there is yet another one. His name slipped my mind. Guys, I'm sorry to say this, but the Ripple stablecoin is going to be released within the next few weeks. There are a lot of people. That is on its way here. Exactly. 
In addition, keep in mind how significant the ties are to SBI and how they are going to Japan. According to your understanding, three Japanese banks, MUFG, Muzuha and SMBC, have plans to employ the stablecoin for international transactions, going live by the year 2025. Also, when you have some good news, I think for those who have been following what you do, you might be launching your stablecoin a little bit sooner than the majority of people thought you would. And we have always been quite constant in our commitment to launch this year, and we intend to do all in our power to make that happen. Before we go live with the stablecoin, we will continue to make sure that we are partnered with U.S. Uh, regulators. This is a crucial problem that we will continue to work on. Everything that Ripple does is in cooperation with regulatory approval and license. We anticipate that we will initially issue it in the United States. However, we believe that there is potential for stablecoins all over the world. And Japan, as you presumably already know, has approved certain legislation that went into effect this year. Stablecoins are now being developed in Japan, and the process of creating them is currently underway. Indeed, I would like to hear more about that. On the other hand, when we are. If I understand well, my friends, the way that this is going to operate is that each and every bank is going to have their very own stablecoin. Wouldn't it be possible for them to launch it on Ripple's network? It's a Ripple baby. All right. Ripple began by being an expert in international payments, and then they moved on to gaining a grasp of CBDCs and the technology behind them, which enables them to assist any nation in establishing their very own CBDC. They have recently begun to invest in stablecoins. This is due to the fact that there is approximately $50 trillion worth of paper money or money lying around in banks all over the world, right? The amount of money that is currently available in the United States is somewhere between $21 and $22 trillion. All right, the process of tokenizing that money and bringing it to Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase, or any other bank provides them with the opportunity to have their very own stable coin. You do this for the reason that. Exactly, this is due to the fact that Chase occasionally transfers funds from its New York location to its Australian location. I am not sure if you understand what I am trying to communicate. It is a very expensive process for them to transfer money from one bank to another, which they are not doing. On the other hand, if you use the XRP ledger and a stablecoin on the XRP ledger, such as Chase stablecoin or Wells Fargo stablecoin or whatever it is, it is going to be it is going to be an unbelievably cheaper way to do it. And this is the reason why financial institutions are likely to act in this manner. All of that value is going to be tokenized, and then they are going to transfer it onto subsequent things. Do you agree? Treasuries, namely United States Treasuries, which are now in circulation, amount to trillions of dollars. Um, each and every one of those is going to end up on that. Do you agree? What are the consequences of making a change to the stock market? Do you agree? In the event that the DTCC makes the decision to digitize and transfer all of those stocks and the settlement onto, for example, R3 or utilizing something like XRP, what are the consequences? That will turn out to be the case. R3 has been working with the DTCC, as far as I am aware. In the past, Donald Donahue served as the president of the DTCC. I am aware that he has relocated, he joined Ripple's board of directors around